Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new version of PCSX2 with a totally overhauled UI. Now this has been a long time coming and what you're seeing on screen right now is basically the old UI. It's looked like this for a very long time. So this is version 1.6. Over here we've got the console. This can always be turned off. And right here we've got, uh, you know, our very small PCSX2 window. Config, emulation settings from here. Uh, you're probably used to playing around with this. We've got our plugin settings. So we've got our video settings here using DirectX 11. And with the older 1.6 version, we basically only had access to OpenGL and DirectX 11. But when it comes to the new version, we've got a totally new look. As you can see here, automatic update. So we do have an update right now. Let's go ahead and do it. I will show you how to get this set up because, uh, yeah, this has been a long time coming. I think it looks absolutely amazing. And seeing PCSX2 coming forward like this is pretty awesome in my opinion. So we've got those automatic updates. And as you can see, we've got a totally different interface here. Really easy to navigate. I've already added some games here. And there's definitely a lot of new features here. But one of my favorites is per game settings. So let's say Gran Turismo 4. If I right click on a game here, we can go to properties graphics or any of these sections here and set it up for the global settings or default global settings or we can change this to basically whatever we'd like and it's only going to apply to this one game. So for instance if you've got one game that has some screen shake and you don't want to have to apply the fix to every single game you can do it directly from here. Per game settings is really awesome to have with PCSX2. And since this is based on version 1.7 we do have access to other renderers. So we've got OpenGL, DirectX 11, DirectX 12, and even Vulkan. So we can run this with the Vulkan backend. Keep in mind, it's still a little experimental on x86, but I've actually had really good luck with it on lower end APUs as opposed to something like OpenGL. But for this system here, I'm going to go with OpenGL because I have more than enough power to run a game like this at 4K with OpenGL. And let's just say you've got a bunch of games that kind of use the same settings. You can always just use the global settings here. So if we go to emulation, we still have the custom preset here. We can go to safe. We can go to fast. On a system like this, I leave it at default. Uh, if you know your system can handle it, we can go ahead and just make sure everything's set to 4K or lower or higher. It's really up to you. And it really depends on how powerful your PC is. Backend can be changed globally also. But having the option to manually change per game settings is absolutely amazing. And the interface here looks really good. You can change it up a bit. We're kind of in dark mode right now. But if you did want to change this up, settings, interface, right here. Let's go to pink light and see what happens. Oh yeah, actually that doesn't look too bad. But we've got several to choose from. And uh, I just think it's really awesome to see a new interface here with PCSX2. So this is only available in the nightly build, so there will be a few issues here and there. If you want to keep with stable and just wait until this goes stable, it's totally up to you. But I'm going to walk you through setting this up real quick, and it's really easy to do. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is head over to the PCSX2 website. They've actually overhauled this in the last couple months. I think it looks really good. We've got the stable releases. These are based on 1.6. It's not going to have that new UI. We want to find the nightly builds, and from here, as of making this video, it's only available for Windows. You can see that Linux still has the WX widgets, same with Mac OS. But when we go to Windows, we have the new QT version and the WX widgets version. So for most people, we're going to go with the very first one here, AVX2 QT. If you do run into issues booting this up, go with the SSE4. But most people will be using AVX2. So we're going to download it. Now we're just going to head to our downloads folder. We're going to extract it. And from here, before I even start, I always like to create a BIOS folder. Just name it BIOS. And we're going to go ahead and place our PS2 BIOS right in here. I'm using the SCPH10000.bin, a basic PS2 BIOS. There are several out there, but this is the US version here. So we've got that. Now let's go ahead and start it up. On the initial startup, you'll just see a screen that looks like this. Settings do not exist or are the incorrect version resetting to defaults. Okay. 
Now with this here, I've already got an update and these are automatic updates we can download, we can skip, we can remind me later. I would highly recommend updating. Now if for some reason you just want to manually check for updates, we can go to help, check for updates, and yeah, that update's still here. So I'll just go ahead and install it. Automatically going to download it and apply it for me. It'll start it right back up. And now we can start using the new version of PCSX2. We can either start up games from a different directory or we can add the game directory here. So I've got some on my desktop here in a folder called ROMs. And these are all ISO ROMs. Just going to scan them automatically got them set up for me. And again, with each one of these, we can set per game settings. So right click, properties, and we can change each one of these settings per game. But for this here, we're just gonna go with the global settings, emulation, and with a newer system, there's really not much you need to change. So we do have this preset down here. For slower systems, you can set this to fast. It will help out with lower clock speeds on CPUs. But if you've got a decently powered CPU, safe preset, which is default, usually does a really great job. Next thing I usually worry about here is graphics because I really like upscaling my games. And with this new version, we do have access to those other renderers. DirectX 12 and Vulkan, in the older versions, we only had DX11 and OpenGL. So you can really experiment with this now. Let's go with OpenGL on this system. And just like the older versions of PCSX2, we've got a lot of settings here. And this has added a lot more, actually. So we've got the advanced settings, system, emulation, and our interface. So it really depends on what kind of system you're running. And if you've been using the original version of PCSX2, then you should be accustomed to these settings here. But some of these, if we just kind of hover over them, gives us the description right there at the bottom. So it makes it really easy to figure out exactly what's going on with each one of these settings. So yeah, having the new interface is great. Those per game settings are awesome. But when it comes to the per game settings, uh, one thing I've actually been experimenting with is just kind of leaving those alone, keeping global, because once we get into a game, we can swap these on the fly. And if we have a custom setting, swapping it from the top menu, I'll show you in a second, just won't apply to that specific game unless it's set to use global. So we're going to go with the Gran Turismo 4. So I've just jumped right into some gameplay. And another really awesome feature is just having these settings right here accessible while we're playing a game. So we're in window mode right now. We can scroll down to graphics, basically anything you want through here. And we can change the resolution on the fly. Now some of these won't work on the fly, but uh, just keep it at 4K. It's pretty awesome to have this so we don't have to kind of minimize everything and go to the extra screen like in the old version of 1.6. Another thing you may want to turn on if you don't like using third-party applications to display, you know, your frame rate and CPU usage are the on-screen stats. So if we go back to settings, graphics, on-screen display, we can show our FPS, CPU usage, statistics, GPU usage, resolution, speed just like Ether SX2 on Android. So now it's really easy to get these stats displayed and you don't have to use a third party application if you don't want to. One last thing before we get out of here, setting up your controller is also easier than ever. We'll go to settings, controllers, and I'm using an Xbox controller plugged in over USB. Controller one, automatic binding. I can choose it from here. So it's ready to go. I can start playing. And to go full screen with it, you can always press Alt Enter on your keyboard or you can head right here to view. And you can start playing your favorite PS2 games using the new version of PCSX2. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I would definitely recommend giving this a try. I wouldn't throw out 1.6 just yet, but to have this extra to mess around with for now with the new interface is still pretty awesome. And down the road, something like this will become stable. I'm not sure how much they're going to change the UI here because it's pretty intuitive and it does work out really well for PCSX2. If you want to try this out for yourself, I'll leave a link to their website in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.